are in the movie in two scenes, you know, and they're really powerful scenes, so people really remember them. I think it, 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 it seems like they were in the movie more than they than they, than they really were. It's a little Hercules. Show me muscle again. Oh, Hercules, 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 Hercules. 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 In the movie, so when they were, because you could test the movie or when it went to video, I mean, everyone would get fast forward and see those family sequences. Yeah, uh, you and Sherman have relations. Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, uh, no, Grandma, uh, it's not like, like that. Uh, we're, we're colleagues. Oh. We just work together. Well, oh, yeah, that's how I start out, colleagues. Me and your grandfather was colleagues. Next thing you know, he's on top of me in the shed, pumping and sweating. When that became that clear that the clumps were... The stars of the show, basically, um, it became evident as to what we should do for a sequel. That we should then make the family members three-dimensional characters. That each one of those characters had their own subplot. Well, look what's wrong You know, at first I thought you were an old man raising men riding on a skateboard. <laughs> yes, I like to come over there and choke the life out of you right in front of teacher. The funny thing was when we were doing the first film, that they almost cut the family out. What I did is I actually called up Eddie and I said, Eddie, they're going to cut these guys out until we show them what, you know, what they're missing. You know, I can go all night. <laughs> oh, save it, too. Oh, now, see what you made me do? That was one of the things that was, uh, that made me wanted to do the movie was uh, doing the whole club family. Uh, so it's kind of like, you know, it's ironic that, <laughs> that the sequel is based around the whole family. But a cool irony, I'm not sitting around like gloating about it or anything, like I told you so or anything like that. It just worked out cool. Sherman, 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 Oh, Lord, that made me so stupid. Eddie did that job in the first one. You know, that scene around the dining room table was slaughtered people. And the thought that he was each one of those characters is incredible. In this movie, he's playing more characters and times three in in story time, in plot time, in film time. And it's astonishing. But then to find a legitimate or organic reason for them to then be part of the story in a significant way was very difficult. I was a little hesitant to do uh, a sequel, but when I looked at the ingredients, there was a germ in the first script that I had read of taking the family, the Klump family, from the dinner table in the first movie and giving them life and getting them up and walking around. And, and I thought, oh man, this could be, this could be a blast. Club party of six, please. Yes, sir, we are hungry. And now, each one of these characters in the clumps has their own, you know, some interesting story. The challenge in this film was to get them up and to move them around and have them be different heights and have them have different postures and walks and have them interact. What's combustible about it is that you're dealing with a family that are played comedically extreme, but they're rooted in what real families are kind of all about, you know, they being the baby. <laughs> and when you counterpoint this family, the clumps, to physical situations that we put them in, then you get these sort of big theatricalized comedy scenes. This movie, for me, is, uh, is the first film hinted at what this movie is, you know. The first film had, had elements of that, that this movie, you know, has, but this movie is just a, just a balls out funnier mo movie. You please put your clothes back on. You hurt yourself. You look like a roast chicken. <laughs> that was a lucky shot. <laughs> what Rick Baker had to do essentially was audition the clump characters, because each character occupies a single day, and in order for them to interact with each other, if you're gonna have a family scene. That could be 10 days to do what would really be just two days. 
Um, so between Rick Baker and Eddie Murphy, and I guess to myself to some degree, we sort of auditioned, did an auditioning process of seeing just how explosive, or if explosive at all, um, these characters would be. I'd li like to present to you all uh, uh, the Wilman College Youth Formula. Maybe I need to take some of that. They don't kill ugly. They don't kill ugly. Come on, Strat. Come on, Strat. I'm going to finish you off. It was just kind of a, a lot of playing around. You know, we kind of line them all up and we're working on them. You know, I'm just like, you have Sherman and the Papa and the Mama and, and look at them and kind of try to find something that looks and makes them look like they're all in the same family. I think Granny's the one that looks like she's the farthest away from them. Oh, my, I see him over here now. Okay, we will, yes, we will enjoy. Thank you. Now, that's what I call the Muy Caliente El Negro Special. So what actually has occurred is that Granny, who was a secondary character, has almost become a predominant character, almost a star in the scenes that where Granny is either mixing it up with the family or certainly with Buddy Love, they're almost arguably censorable, you know? Everybody liked it to Granny because she was talking about relations. You know, just funny, man. She's the best one of them all. The grandma's my favorite character. She has a lot of spunk to her, a lot of fire. Like the old Frank, that's a be la loca. Mm -hmm. I ain't gonna know, I'll be right here for the right old Frank part. Oh, Frank! I call uh, Mama the glue. She's the, you know, the figure that, that brings everybody together. She is not the funniest, but she's the person who's most like Sherman. The amazing thing is, uh, looking at the skillet scene, for example, I said to Eddie, I said, you know, there's this amazing similarity between uh, mother and son and father and son, meaning uh, Papa and Ernie. You know, they're kind of a darker, gruffer set. And, and Eddie said, yeah, exactly, I wanted Sherman to be a mama's boy and Ernie is the boy, you know, the black sheep of the family always trying to win the approval of his dad and not even always getting that. You know fame is gonna pass. The only thing that's permanent is family. Ain't that right, Dad? Get your ass up there. Ah, shoot. How many damn times Ernie like I take stay out of my damn chair? Oh, you man. work on them cars all day, go put the grease all in my chair, smear the grease in there. Now I, I gotta sit on this grease. My great pants still got grease all over because of you. Yeah, you got your chair. Stay out of my damn chair, please. Ernest, will you please tell your father to be quiet? When you see the whole mix coming together, I must say I, I have fallen in love with Papa as being this, another victim, you know, of his own set of circumstances and being retired and forced into retirement and having uh, uh, problems in bed and, um, I must say, I've, I've grown to love him, and, and every time that, that we see these characters in dailies, we treat them like actors. It's like, hey, we haven't seen Papa in a while. Hey, we haven't seen Mama in a while. It's not, oh, Eddie's as Mama today. You don't, you don't believe these people when they're on film that way. They actually are the real thing. Beautiful day, isn't it, Professor? Baby, you okay? What? Uh, I said, um, he likes me. Look at him away. I think the reason Sherman's so lovable is that he happens to be fat, but what really is deeper than that is it's a man that is funny and charming and sweet, and I kind of think that women will root, you know, root for that, <laughs> and, and apparently men do too. I think people identify with Sherman Clump because he is so vulnerable. He's every man. Everybody has an insecure side of their personality. Um, whether you're 400 pounds or you're just 40 pounds overweight, um, whether you know deep down you can do something, but you're too afraid to actually try. I mean, there, there's something that everyone can identify with him. And so when he has uh, uh, the apple of his eye right there in front of him, um, you so badly want him to uh, achieve his goal, to get together, to find someone who loves him. You fall in love with this guy, you feel for him. He's, he has a brilliant mind, he's very kind, he's a sweetheart, and I think that's what every girl really, really wants. Just when you thought it was safe to go back to the theaters. Maybe we should get going. I don't feel too good, so Let's go. Buddy Love is, uh, I like him in this movie. He's more aggressive. You know, in the other movie, he was just trying to take Sherman's girl and mess his life up. But now he's like out and all over the place. And, uh, just a lot more to play with, you know. Buddy is finally out free and about. His own person. He's no longer an alter ego. 
he is his own ego. And uh, he tries to steal a, a youth formula that Sherman has invented, and it's these two people as separate entities uh, clashing against one another uh, that create uh, the, the, the tension in this in the story. Sherman! Yeah. Sherman, come! <laughs> well, you've still been hitting them Happy Meals, huh? You haven't changed an inch. You remember me? It's Buddy Love. We used to both chase that girl Carla at the same time. Once again, Buddy Love. Sherman being happy, once again in his life, he wants to come out and kind of ruin everything for Sherman without giving too much of the, the film away. Well, who's your new friend? She sure is fine. Yes, you, you're fine. What's your name? When we started casting the, the girl, um, we screen tested, you know, almost every actress. I mean, so many, and including many rock stars. And then the idea of Janet came about, actually, from Eddie. And we thought, oh, my God, what, what Janet embodies is sort of exactly what we need in this character. And when she came on, she wanted to. She volunteered to audition, which um, was the first thing that we discovered was amazing about her. Um, then when she did it, she blew people away, and we knew instantly, instantly, that she was Denise Gaines. I started recording the next album when they actually called me for this uh, to meet with Peter and, and Michael and, and Brian. And it's, I just completely removed myself because they asked me, so what are you doing right now? I said, well, I'm working on the next project. And they said, oh, really? Well, is that going to be a problem if, if uh, you wind up doing this film? And I said, well, no, I'll just put it on the back burner because it's, it's important to me. And I think it's only fair, not just to myself, but to everyone else around me, for me to try to at least do my best and give my all and all of my attention and focus on this. I'd never been in a movie where I, my co-star was, you know, I've worked with other actors and stuff, but this is Janet's like this superstar. I was like, wow, I'm a superstar on the set. You know, and what's brilliant that she does is there's none of that in the movie. You know, that's the thing that she did, shows you, she, this is what shows you she's such a strong actress that she pulls off not being this, because Jack, Jack, Janet Jackson is incredibly sexy and beautiful and all that. And in this movie, she's just this adorable college professor and completely believable. She could do all this actor stuff, like cry on cue and all that. Janet is bad. You know, you'll see, they'll see when they want to see the movie. Hey. You watch it now. You reach over here again, you're going to pull back enough. <laughs> Please, she's fiery. I like that. Tell me don't touch the chicken. Don't be hitting on people. The characters that Eddie Murphy created were absolutely seamless. Not only was the makeup seamless, but the way he inhabited the makeup was seamless. seamless. Um, that you were unable to detect that that was Eddie Murphy in any way, you know? And that blew people's minds. The amazing thing that, that I will say is about Eddie is that throughout the entire process, if ever there's a question about the kind of joke that we're trying to tell, he always brings it back to what is real, what is believable, what is uh, something that this character would actually do or say, as opposed to going too far just for the laugh. When he has to play these multiple characters, of course he has to interact essentially on a blue screen and a practical location at sometimes and a tennis ball. Um, so it takes an amazing amount of concentration on his part, but more important, an amazing amount of sort of an artistic um, commitment to what he's trying to communicate so that nothing can interfere with his vision. I like to do this uh, character stuff and do makeup. I always wonder how come other act more actors don't do it because it kind of frees you up in terms of what you can do on screen. The one thing I learned, you know, 20 years ago when I started being a producer, that when you're dealing with real talent, you can never take it for granted at all ever because there's not that many people that have that that, that have that level of raw talent, and Eddie is uniquely one of those people. You all right? You look a little strange, Rochelle. What's going on? Looking like something on your mind. Well, uh, Daddy, you know, I, I kind of got that on my mind. You know, really, I do. I guess I'm a little worried about my presentation and all that. Right. Presentation? Hey, you ain't nothing to be worried about. Shit, let me tell you something. We're going to be all watching your own TV supporting you, and you should be proud. We proud. I know I'm proud. I'll tell you that. You ain't got nothing to be worried. You're going to be doing just great. What about your presentation? Oh, oh I ain't doing it all. You ain't like a little bitch. Then, by the way, Sherman, too, how many people can say, how many people can say that they raised a genius? I don't know how many hours I sat in the chair. If this movie was uh, 86 days, I was in the makeup chair for 75 of those days, you know. At minimum three hours in the chair, so that's rough. I've been there, I've been. I've worn the stuff. I grew up making myself up. 
I know what it's like to do, to wear these things. I've I've worn costumes in films, worn contact lenses, so I know I know what they're going through. So I always try to make it as comfortable as possible and as practical as possible. But do the grandma, the character, she's the most extensive makeup because I think she has like. 12 different pieces that they have to put on. They do your eyes and stuff, and you have to do your hands, so you might be in a chair for four hours, five hours when they do the grandmother. He likes to have fun with it. He has fun with the makeup. So he would take the mother, who, you know, we, we all know what the mother's like now, you know. He was doing something very similar to that in the first test, and then he would turn it into this different woman by really contorting his face and just things he did, you know. It, it, it looked like a totally different makeup. You know? he's, he's, he makes them come to life. One of my concerns was how we were going to do this fat suit, and I wanted to make it very real. And you know, overweight people, they, their body like jiggles around and moves a lot. We wanted to to get that effect, but make as lightweight a suit as possible. So. The suits are fabricated. We, we first sculpted a form to look to see what, where the fat should go, you know, on what on, on his body. Uh, but then it was fabricated. It's carved out of a urethane foam, like a mattress is made out of. It's different fat suits, for, different suits for each character, you know. And, and I, I'm pretty, I can move around pretty good in all of them. Uh, some of them are more. Uh, the, the the father suit is bigger, and Sherman's suit is really big, so it's really uncomfortable to wear. Basically, it's kind of like a pair of pants and a coat the way it works you know, we have the fat fat legs that he slips on like a pair of pants and, and an upper torso that he puts his arms into and he zip up the back and then, and then, then he's fat oh, look at that that's cool my that's look. Real. look at that Pete. in the beginning there have been conversations where i've had walking up to the trailer and uh, i've had to talk to eddie about the scene that we're about to shoot and he'll have the granny head on and there'll be no body, no wig, so it's just his head, and he'll have, you know, his regular clothes on around it. And at first I'll be talking, okay, I was thinking about it, I had an idea for this line, and what do you think about this? And as we'd be talking, finally I'd look at him, I'd go, you know, wait, I have to stop right here. This is freaky. You know, you are a freak of nature right now. You've got, like, a large head and a really skinny body, and you're completely bald. I mean, it, it's, it's so surreal talking. It's like Tinker Toys, and unless they're all put together, you know, you're, you're looking at a little round dowel. Basically, Eddie, that was terrible. I think we have to do it all. Oh, hi. Turn it off! It is actually uh, a little weird because you hear Sherman's voice and suddenly you hear Eddie's voice. I've been here two weeks and I've not seen Eddie as Eddie yet. I haven't seen Eddie as Eddie before makeup or after. I've only seen Sherman. So it's like I'm hanging out with Sherman. I mean, he's Sherman. That guy's Sherman. It's like, it's like he immediately puts it on. And he's really quiet between takes for the most part. Uh, and when he speaks like Eddie, it's real soft. But when he comes out of Sherman, it's like huge. Eddie's great at moving it. You know, when we put it on him, he, he experiments with it. He looks in the mirror, he moves it around. He sees what it takes, how much he has to exaggerate his facial expressions to make him read through the rubber. You know? Oh my God, I got to turn the chin. I don't want my baby to see him there. That man ain't gonna never be right again. Well, oh, I need to take Isaac Preston. Oh, what's wrong with this? Something like that will ruin a man. Turn the baby's eye. That's too much excitement for my baby. Turn the channel. I can't even turn. That's nasty. Yeah, that's what that is, all right. Turn the baby's eye. He don't even know what it is, mama. Now, was that supposed to happen? If you've already got uh, one actor playing seven roles in the first movie, what can you do differently? So it, it was about moving the camera. It was taking motion control technology where there were simpler split screens before and making people interact, touch each other, grab things off of plates, um, give uh, you know, a, a kiss on the cheek, and, and have it all be one person. Have, have one person dancing with themselves. We have Eddie as mama and papa. Things like that have never been done before. And we said, okay. Uh, this could be pretty cool. Here you are, little foxy pie in the night. Oh. <laughs> you got me feeling like I'm 20 years old again. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, oh. Jesus, is that show? Mm -hmm. You're damn right. Hercules, 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 Hercules. When Eddie plays a, a role as Mama and Mama's talking to Papa, we usually give Eddie an eyeline for Papa which is, in many cases, a tennis ball on a stick, or we actually have a moving eye line. It's like a snake, and um, 
Eddie can walk through the set, and then we have these tracking cameras that track his motion through the set. And then once we, for each take, we know exactly what that motion is. And what we can do is then in the set, put like a little flying light that moves exactly where his head was, or exactly where between his eyes was in a previous take. Eddie will follow the bouncing ball, so to speak, which is a tracking light. And uh, then on top of that, when you're combining eye line movement uh, with physical interaction, for example, when Sherman stands up and to hold out the chair for Denise, Janet Jackson, and Mama gives him a kiss on the cheek, tennis ball leans in, and, and Eddie has to know exactly where he's going to be the next day as the next character. And it's this complicated physical ballet with nothing there. Add to that a moving camera. So now you got to move the camera exactly to a micron you know, tolerance, exactly in the, in the same way. So you can do a split right between them, and the backgrounds match. We let our operator actually run free, and then we record everything the operator does. So once he's done, he can stand back, and we play it back, and we can actually play the camera back exactly like it moved in any take. It's all smoke and mirrors, and that's the amazing thing. And beyond that, to make it all seem natural, once you're doing the physical jumping jacks and then making it seem believable, that's the thing that blew me away. I mean, all these people are real. Grandma, what's wrong with you? Well, if it isn't the hell, I'm express. Right on schedule. Stop it. I'm go right on my bunny. Oh, Y'all about to excuse me for being late. With my grandmother, boy, with my grandmother. We got a really good crew. We got a really good, young, talented director. Uh, we got a uh, really good producers and a studio that's behind the film and and i'm doing the type of thing that i like to do you know it's fun for me to be back in this movie because it's a good movie and it's a nice part to play it's a chance to be funny but i think folks can and will expect that what they got from eddie they're going to get again times three hilarious comedy all the way through the whole movie's going to be funny there's going to be some serious scenes in the movie, but it's also going to be funny. Everything is just going to be hilarious. What I want is people to have a great time, come back and see it several more times, and I think they will. Um, but also, there's a deeper meaning in the movie because it does deal with intellectual capability, and because there's a time in the movie where Sherman gets dumb, and that's really sad. And so your heart goes out to that to Sherman when he's dumb. It creates a great amount of empathy in you. And so it has this other dimension that, you know, so when you walk out of the theater, you might not be so judgmental of people. I think uh, an audience coming to this movie is gonna have a howl. I think uh, they're gonna get their money's worth and I sound like I'm running for office saying that, but I've seen a rough cut of it and, and it is really funny. Probably a lot more laughs uh, overall than the first one. I think the first one had huge like breaks of laughter in the dinner scenes and stuff like that. But when you get to see all the characters kind of together, as much as you do in this one, it's like a lot of laughter. Everybody should watch it and see it because it's going to be great. This is a family movie. This is a movie that everybody's going to be able to come to see. And everybody's going to laugh real hard. And maybe pee on themselves. <laughs>